A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video on denesting radicals. And this time we are going to denest a cube root inside of a cube root something. And this right here is a very famous result, first being derived by the one and only Indian mathematician in itself. You know who I mean, I'm talking about the guy who was always on crack thinking he could talk to ghosts in his sleep about mathematics. Yes, I'm talking about Ramanujan here. And yeah, he derived this at first and built a whole theory about um, yeah, denesting radicals in certain fields which leads to a bunch of results in Galois theory too and so on. And oh boy, it took me quite a while to come up with the solution for myself. So I knew where I wanted to go, but to find a way to denest this thing was pretty hard, okay? Took me, took me a few hours, okay? And we're going to go through the whole process here. It's actually not that hard, but if you try to do it for yourself, it's actually really hard. But before we can get started, we are going to derive a few very important results from the binomial theorem in uh, ba basically of degree 3 and then we can go ahead and start denesting. So at first I want you guys to remember uh, what it looks like if we have um, x plus y to the third power. Okay this right here is just a binomial theorem and it's going to follow the pattern on Pascal's triangle. This is going to result in x to the third power plus 3x squared y plus 3x y squared plus y to the third power. This is what we got right now. This right here is the binomial theorem and we are going to use it later. But from this result we can actually derive a few more very nice results. Namely what we can do is we can isolate x to the third power plus y to the third power. Let us do this real quick and for this I'm just going to subtract this uh, three times x squared y and uh, three times x y squared on both sides, leaving us overall with x to the third power plus y to the third power is hence nothing other than, okay, so we got x plus y to the third power, which is nothing other than x plus y times x plus y squared. This is going to be important in a second. And now what we're going to do is we are going to subtract the first factor from it, negative 3x squared y and then negative 3x y squared. Now everything is going to unfold nicely, trust me. So at first I want you guys to notice that um, x plus y squared is nothing other than the binomial theorem of degree 2, meaning this is x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Okay, if we write all of this out, um, leaving us with x plus y times x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And also what we got here is um, a bunch of factors that we can factor out. I mean negative 3 is a common factor on both of those and also x and y is a common factor on both of those two. So let us factor out negative 3xy and what is going to be left is just um, x plus y. Okay, try it out for yourself, take a piece of paper, it's actually pretty apparent. And now we got something good going because x plus y is a common factor factor on uh, both of those terms, leaving us overall with x to the third power plus y to the third power being nothing other than, okay, x plus y. You can also do polynomial division if you can see the first factor of x plus y, okay. Um, but this right here is a nice way to derive the formula for um, the summation of two cubes. And what we are going to be left with is, if we factor this out, x squared plus y squared plus 2xy minus 3xy is just going to give us negative xy in the middle, meaning times x squared minus xy and then plus y squared. This right here is the first identity that we are going to use. But now what you can do is you can manipulate this identity a tiny little bit more and say we are going to do a transformation where our y is going to take negative values, okay? Y is going to go to negative y. If we have negative something to the third power, this is just a negative of the something to the third power, meaning this is going to give us an identity of the difference of two cubes. This is also a pretty important identity in number theory in, in general. Meaning, okay, we are just going to plug um, a negative sign in front of all of our single y's with y to the f uh, first power. So this is going to give us x minus y and then times x squared um, plus xy plus y squared. I don't know if you have ever seen the derivation of those two um, identities before, but this is a way you can go about doing this. 
And now that we got all of those identities out of the way, those are pretty important, we can go ahead and get started with using those identities on our radical that we want to denest. There was a lot of preparation, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to make our life way easier. And at first I want you guys to notice that what we got here is basically just the difference um, of two values, okay? Um, the difference of two values x and y. Really doesn't matter. Our cube root of two is our x and one is our where. Now where in our identities do we have um, some kind of x minus y? I mean we don't have it here. Um, we also really don't have it here. So meaning the only identity where this holds is on this one right here. x minus y is nothing other if this part doesn't vanish. Um, then x to the third power minus y to the third power over x squared plus blah blah blah. Okay, and this is what we are going to manipulate our third into now, meaning we are going to get the cube root off. And now it's going to um, get a little bit funnier. So what we get up here in numerator is x to the third power, where our x is the cube root of 2, meaning we are going to get the cube root of 2, but the whole thing cubed. And our y is going to be our 1. So minus um, 1 to the third power. And all of this divided by plugging x and y into here respectively is going to give us the cube root of 2 but the whole thing squared. Then we are going to add to it the multiplication of our cube root of 2 and 1, which is just going to be the cube root of 2. And last but not least, we are going to add y squared to it, but y is nothing other than 1, meaning plus 1. That was easier, right? <laughs> Pretty easy um, first step to arrive at, um, if you can see it at first glance, which I don't think you can. Now, we can go ahead and simplify our numerator time a little bit. I mean, if we have the cube root of something to the third power, this is just going to be the something in itself, meaning what we have up here is hence nothing other than 2 minus 1, which is going to be 1, divided by, and now, we got still this right here. I'm going to write it out because um, we need to do some more manipulation to arrive at something nice here. So meaning we are still left with the cube root of 2 squared plus the cube root of 2 and then plus 1. Now, next up um, is going to be a step which is once again not very apparent. Like mentioned before, it took me ages to arrive at the solution and to find a nice way. What we are going to do now is we are going to expand numerator and denominator by a 3. This is going to be important in a second. Let us do this really quick. We are going to be left with the cube root of 3 divided by, okay, and then just a factor of 3 in front of all of those. So 3 times the cube root of 2, but squared plus 3 times the cube root of 2 plus 3. Now you might think to yourself, um, how does this help? Well, it does help in the sense that we can now decompose our 3 into a 2 plus 1. Please remember that 3 is nothing other than the successor of 2, meaning we can express 3 as being 1 plus 2 or 2 plus 1 since summing up is um, commutative. Now what we can do is we can rewrite our 2 into something that I said before. This is just a cube root of 2 but to the third power, okay? Meaning this is one plus, now we got the cube root of two to the third power. And this right here is a very, very nice step because if we just rewrite it like this, our three, it's going to unfold very nicely in the end. What we are going to do now is uh, I, I'm going to write everything out yet again. This is the cube root of three divided by, and now I'm going to bring everything into order. This is the cube root of two, but to the third power. Next up, what we are going to get is plus. Okay, I'm going to write it out nicely. This is three times the cube root of two, but that thing squared times one. If it takes some quantity times one, it really doesn't change, but it's going to be important in a second. Now, next up is just this summon, meaning this is plus three times the cube root of two, and then times one, but one is the same as one squared, since it's an even potent in the real numbers. And then what we are going to be left with is just one, which is once again nothing other than one to the third power. Now this right here is a pretty big third, but it's worth it. It's worth rewriting everything nicely, because you might um, recognize what we got down here in the denominator. We just got ourselves just a binomial theorem where our x that we got before is nothing other than the cube root of 2 once again and our y is nothing other than 1. Please take a look at the similarities here. 
This right here is our binomial theorem, x to the third power plus 3x squared y, blah, blah, blah. And this right here is what we arrived at right now, which is just a binomial of degree 3 um, in our x and y values being square root of 2, uh, no, cube root of 2 and 1 respectively. Leaving us overall with the cube root of, and now we got 3 in the numerator, divided by the cube root of 2 plus 1 to the third power. And oh, once I arrived at this back in the days, ooh, this, was, this was such a, oh, God bless. Okay, this is really nice because what we got here right now is just, well, if you take the cube root of a cube, it's just going to vanish. Um, just being the argument in itself. And up here in the numerator, we are going to get the cube root of three. Leaving us overall right now with the cube root of three divided by, and now we got the cube root of two plus one. And we are not done yet, because what we are going to do now is we are going to expand this fraction right here by one over the cube root of three divided by one over the cube root of three. Or in other words, we are just going to take the reciprocal of the cube root of three, just simply bring it down here into the denominator, leaving us with one divided by one over the cube root of three multiplied with, and now I'm going to rewrite our one a tiny little bit more. I mean, obviously we got the cube root of two right here, but then we got, well, one is nothing other than the cube root of one. This is pretty good, okay? This is very nice. I love the number one. It has so many nice properties because it stays how it is all the time, which is really good. So we got the cube root of one. And now this is really good because you know there, there's the multiplicative property of roots, namely if we have um, a square root, for example, times another square root is just the square root of the um, arguments multiplied together. We got the same situation here, namely this is going to turn into 1 divided by. And now the first one is going to be the cube root of 2 divided by 3 and then plus the cube root of 1 third. And now we are basically done. There's not much more to do. The only thing that I would like to do is to rewrite our one in the numerator. So many arbitrary manipulations here, but you can't get it another way, in, in my opinion. It's, it's just, it was Remenuton. He got really lucky or he was just extremely knowledgeable. Wh whatever he was, he was an absolute fucking god and he really knew what he did. <laughs> he was such an amazing guy. Now one is nothing other than, by coincidence, one third plus two thirds. So this up here in the numerator is one third plus two thirds. And once again, one third for example is the same as the cube root of one third, but to the third power. Okay, I hope you can see where I'm going at here. And two over three is nothing but cube root of two thirds to the third power. Let us rewrite this a less time once again, meaning our um, quotient is going to turn into. So we got the cube root of one third, to the third power plus the cube root of two thirds to the third power divided by, all of this divided by, okay, so we got the cube root of one third plus the cube root of two thirds. And now here comes the grande finale because you might recognize this identity as something that we have right here. Because this is of the form x to the third power plus y to the third power divided by x plus y. Hmm. Let us take a look into our um, little table of contents that we got right here. Um, just, um, what do you call it? Um, I, uh, yeah, you know what I mean from the skit with uh, Sexstar. So the list of, of integrals basically just with um, algebraic identities. Namely what we got here is something to the third plus something to the third over something plus something is just this identity divided by x plus y. Leaving us overall with this quotient being nothing other than something of the form x squared minus x y plus y squared, where our x and y are respectively the cube root of one third and also the cube root of two thirds. And leaving us overall with the cube root of one third, but that thing squared, and then minus the cube root of one third times the cube root of two thirds. And then last but not least, plus the cube root of two thirds <laughs> And all of this squared, and now we can m make use of nice property that we can basically bring the exponent to the inside if those um, are non-negative under the third right here. And we can also use the multiplicative property of our thirds right here to arrive at the cube root of, okay, um, one third squared is going to give us one ninth um, minus, then we got the cube root of um, 
two ninths plus, and last but not least, the cube root of four ninths. And this right here is the solution to denesting the radical, which is pretty damn amazing if you ask me. And yeah, this result is just utterly ri ridiculous. And you need a lot of prerequisites to, um, yeah, and, and just a lot of practice in general to get to the answer. And if you did like what you saw here today and you want to learn more mathematical tricks, then I invite you to try out today's sponsor, Brilliant, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Brilliant is an absolutely brilliant website and you should definitely check it out. Now Brilliant, in my opinion, is one of the best sources online ever to um, learn something about all things STEM, be it mathematics that we did today, simple number theory up until analytic number theory partly, or you want to learn something about physics, chemistry, Python programming, a lot of other things. Brilliant definitely got you covered. So no matter where you want to go to in the STEM field, it really doesn't matter which um, major you want to basically pick. Preint has a lot of exercises for you where you can try to strengthen your experience in the respective classes, modules, etc. And by far the best thing about Preint is the way they teach you the stuff you want to learn. It's not like at university where there's a teacher in, in the front or a professor who's going to tell you a bunch of theorems and the like. And you don't get a really intuitive understanding about what you are doing there. It's not like that on, on Preint. They try to um, tell you a, a story basically with those exercises. They try to playfully, once you engage with the exercises in itself, drag around stuff play around with geometric structures, maybe do a bunch of stuff with, with a graph to see how Riemann integrals really um, tend to exist, how they work, etc. And they really do a good job at that. And I just love what they do on their website and it's just overall absolutely amazing and you should definitely check it out. And if you're not convinced yet, check out some of my live streams where I cover a lot of brilliant courses and get a first glimpse of those courses for yourself and maybe it's really something for you. And if you think that it's something for you, if you feel like this could kind of enrich your life in some way, possibly, then make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it you can try out a big portion of Brilliant for free already, but more importantly the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is a great deal considering how much content they have available on their website already. And they are actually adding new courses each and every month, which is really amazing too, so you never run out of content basically for your home. Whole lifetime's worth. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And other than that, I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy what we did here today, then please like, subscribe and comment channel if you like and share the video around, etc. Also, um, go over to STEM merch for some epic um, making fun of engineering and physicists uh, merch. And after the next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao!